Well, Dr. David Buckholz has worked for 14 years as director of the Neurological Consultation Clinic at Johns Hopkins uh, University. And he joins us now to discuss how to heal your headache. Doctor, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the Seven Hundred. Thanks Thank for you. having me and allowing me to share this very good news and message of hope. How extensive is the problem of migraines? Do you have any idea? Tens of millions of Americans suffer from frequent severe headaches, often on a daily basis. So what is it like if you've got a migraine? I thank the Lord I don't have one, but what, what, what is it like when they've got one of those things? Miserable, incapacitating, debilitating, yeah. life-ruining, but it's not necessary. Well, you have explored uh, the causes in your book, Heal Your Headache. Well, wh what are the, some of the trigger points that, that would just start a migraine cascade or whatever? Think of it this way. There's a mechanism built into the human brain that generates headaches. When it gets activated by a variety of triggers, it produces painful blood vessel swelling in the head, face, and neck. Okay. The triggers feed into a control center and include things like stress, hormones, barometric pressure changes, what we eat and drink, certain medications, not getting enough sleep, and these add up. Mm -hmm. So you have a stack of triggers that you carry around that fluctuates from day to day, and in your headache control center, you have a limit of tolerance, a threshold that is such that if your total trigger level stays below it, you don't have a headache. And when your trigger level climbs above, you've got a mild headache. And as the trigger level soars, you have a severe headache. Virtually all headaches arise from this single mechanism. Here you've got a migraine. Mm -hmm. Here you have what you might think of as a sinus headache. Here you have a tension headache. The solution to virtually all headaches is to keep your triggers down and keep your limit of tolerance or threshold up. Well, for example, uh, what do painkillers do if you're going to take them? I mean, people will rush to the medicine cabinet and extra strength excedrin and pop a couple of those. Is that a help or a, a hindrance? It's a hindrance. Unfortunately, it's what most headache sufferers do, Pat. What the painkillers do too often is actually cause your threshold to be depressed so it becomes easier and easier to cross the line. You pop a pain pill, maybe it helps the headache you have, but it makes your next headache more likely. So you quickly get into a vicious cycle of increasing headaches and increasing drug use leading to more headaches. So the first step of the three steps that are required to control headaches is to get away from these rebound causing pain pills. Mm -hmm. On the screen is an example of this. A represents a blood vessel that's swollen okay. due to this process having been activated by triggers. B represents these pain pills constricting this swollen blood vessel and temporarily relieving your pain. Mm -hmm. C shows the blood vessel rebounding, swelling with a vengeance as these pain pills wear off, and now your headache problem is worse in their wake. First step in controlling headaches is to get away from the rebound causing quick fix pain pills. You know, we've just been looking at the, the saga of one of the Kennedys who did very erratic things and he claimed he was taking, I think, wasn't it sleep medicine? Ambien? Is, is that a, a pain medicine or is that a sleep medicine? No, the, the pain pills that cause rebound are certain over the counter drugs, those with caffeine, such as Excedrin, right. and sinus medications, and then there's a bunch of prescription drugs the triptans like Imitrex and others, narcotics would be included. Ambien's not one of them, though. Oh, I see. Okay. But uh, well, what do you tell people? I mean, they've got a headache. I mean, just, just <laughs> suck it up and go through it. I tell people this. They can learn how to control their headaches. And the first step is to abandon dependence on these rebound-causing pain pills. Mm -hmm. People say, ah, oh, it's too difficult. I can't do it. I say, look, are you satisfied with your headache problem? The answer is usually no. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing to try to control it isn't working, is it? No. Well, if there's a better way, and there is, it must be a different approach. And the first step in that approach is to get rid of your dependence on pain pills. Nowhere is Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, more true than when it comes to this dependence on pain pills for headaches. Well, what about... Uh Somebody's got a headache, I mean, going to sleep, rest, uh, relief of tension, are there activities you can take that don't cause the rebound? Yes, all of those are fine. But what you really want to do is focus on step two, which is doing what you can to reduce your trigger exposure. Mm -hmm. There are lots of triggers, some of which you're stuck with, like, for example, barometric pressure changes, stress, hormones. But then there are triggers that you can more readily control, and there are a lot of them, and it turns out mm -hmm. that the biggest chunk of your trigger load that you can get rid of it comes from what you eat and drink. 
all sorts of things that we commonly eat and drink are major triggers, and by avoiding them, you can substantially reduce your trigger load and the likelihood of headache. Lady in our makeup room was saying that she had a problem with MSG. It just really, you know, just dro drove her head crazy. Is, is that uh, is MSG one? That MS MSG and caffeine are probably the two biggest, and MSG is everywhere. It's not just in Chinese restaurant food. It's in all sorts of commercially processed food products that wouldn't taste like much if they didn't have this flavor enhancer added to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not always labeled as MSG or monosodium glutamate. It's labeled as hydrolyzed protein or natural flavors, and you'd never suspect it. And they call it hydrolyzed protein, but it's that that, could, that triggers these reactions? And MSG is an excitotoxin. It's deadly, isn't it? That's exactly right. It's yeah. an excitotoxin, and it turns on this headache me mechanism and makes you hurt like oh, heck. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Bronkholz has got this wonderful book, Heal Your Headache, the 123 program. Uh, you can get that through CBN.com or where books are sold. And I think Christy is ready over here with some of those foods we're to avoid. So, Doctor, if you don't mind going over there, thank you so much. Thank you. As you said, uh, Pat, we have talked about different migraines and what causes them. Well, now we're going to talk about the exact food triggers. And I know, Doctor, you instantly, I know, right? You instantly were telling Pat about caffeine. And so we think of sugar and coffee and, and cola. Sure. Yeah. Cola, coffee, tea all contain caffeine. Mm -hmm. Chocolate does too. Chocolate has other triggering chemicals. And then diet colas, they have the added trigger of NutraSweet, aspartame. Mm -hmm. So these are pretty obvious yeah. for many people. Here we have some beef jerky. jerky that's loaded with nitrites okay. to preserve the meat and also monosodium glutamate. Other preserved meats, for example, hot dogs, bacon, lunch meat like bologna would also be culprits. I'm curious because when I look at beef jerky, I instantly think about the sodium content of it. Is, is, are are uh, foods high in sodium also? No. It's They're not, not. It's not salt. It's not sugar. It's specific chemicals, MSG being one, mm. caffeine being another, tyramine is another that occurs in a lot of natural foods, which we'll get to at that end of the table. Okay, let's talk about these protein bars. Yeah, protein bars. You think that all protein bars are supposed to be healthy, doctor? Well, unfortunately, in the processing of the protein to make these bars, glutamate is released. So essentially, these contain monosodium glutamate. MSG. A, a, yes, as well as nuts and sometimes other triggers themselves. Which is fascinating because when we talk about MSG, just like you mentioned to Pat, I instantly think of Chinese food. I forget that MSG is in so many other different food products. It sure is. Yeah, let's talk about uh, healthy choice meals such or lean cuisine. Well, this is an example. Unfortunately, these, these frozen diet meals, they wouldn't taste like much if they didn't have their flavor enhanced by MSG. So these are laden with MSG. Mm. A, a lot of things that people gravitate towards when they want to lose weight, like these items or these energy bars or soy products or high protein diet, cheese and nuts, those are all headache triggers. That's interesting because when I think about diet foods, the reason why I would get headaches was because I thought I was depriving myself or I wasn't eating enough food. Well, if you skip meals, that's another trigger. There's lots of triggers. Yeah. But a lot of it has to do with what we, we put into our mouths and swallow. And we don't recognize it for good reasons. It can be delayed up to a day or two after you consume the item, the headache that you get. Okay, now these obviously didn't surprise me. These items shock me. You've got yogurt, fruit, and even an onion. So yes. Yes. I would never think that these things were headache-causing items. Citrus is a big-time trigger. Bananas, yogurt onions, nuts, lots of things you'd think would be healthy. But why? So like, let's go with the yogurt. Is it because there's artificial sugars in the yogurt? No, no, no. It's the, it's the culturing of the dairy product that produces tyramine. Tyramine is a headache trigger. Tyramine is naturally contained with in ban bananas and, and accumulates as they ripen. Okay. Uh, now, speaking of accumulate, I'm thinking that if I just eat a banana or one orange, it's not going to kill me. But if, it's, if I eat a lot of them, is that the issue here? They add up. They add okay. up. Triggers add up. It's not just dietary items either. It's if your period's approaching and the barometric pressure's dropping and you're stressed out and you didn't sleep well. And on top of that, you consume too many dietary triggers, you're going to wind up crossing the line, mm -hmm. getting a headache. Wonderful. Doctor, thank you so much Thanks for joining for us. I tell you what, if you want more information, all you have to do is log on to CBN.com for uh, foods which trigger migraines. Well, once again, thank you so much. We appreciate you. you.